What's up guys, Steam Reader 1, 2, and 2, and it's list day. Ah, yes, list day. And today we're looking at the top 10 worst cards of 2022. It's all fine and dandy to look back at the year and all of the best cards, but I think it's far more fun to dump on the bad ones. So without further ado, let's look at some bad Yugi Bands. Number 10, Ika the Flame Buddy. Level 4 Fire Warrior Monster, 1500 attack, 200 defense. What do? If this card is normal or special summoned, you can target one face-up monster that is being treated as a spell or trap, special summon it to your side of the field. Also, as an ignition, you can target one other face-up monster you control, equip it to this card as an equip spell, and this thing gains 500 attack. You can only use each effect once per turn. Okay, 200 defense on a fire monster is, is okay. That means we have some synergy with some of the fire support cards. I guess that's a plus. But, but for what? Uh, one of the weirdest counters to pendulums I have ever read. Granted, you could use it with things like, uh, crystal beasts and princess union monsters. Basically anything that takes monsters and puts them down in the spell or trap zone. But other than a uh, subpar form of removal, you don't really get much for it. It's just a 2k beat stick. I do like the fact that you could take one of your opponent's pendulum scales and then immediately equip it to this thing. Uh, that's kind of cute. And if it's something like purple poison, I guess it prevents it from activating its effect. That is also kind of cute. This is way underwhelming. Number nine, General Probe. <laughs> Continue a spell card. It's not a monster, big sad. Each time an effect of a Symphonic Warrior monster is activated, place one Symphonic counter on this card. When that effect resolves, you can only use each of the following effects of General Probe <laughs> once per turn. You can remove three Symphonic counters from the field, add one Symphonic Warrior from your deck to your hand. Cool. If you normal or special summon one Symphonic Warrior monster, except during the damage step, you can add one Symph Amplifier from your deck to your hand. Okay, so having a Rota for your deck is never a bad thing. However, tying it to the requirement of you activating three monster effects means your deck is already working, or presumably at least doing something, so uh, you are certainly not getting a starter with this, which is really what a Rota should be used for. Not only that, I think the field spell is probably better at generating these stupid things. And I don't know what Simp Amplifier does, and I don't care. <laughs> But you can get it, that's a thing. But I don't care what you say, 10 out of 10, best card name. Number eight, Leaf Place Place. I look it up, that's how you pronounce this. Level three, Dark Psychic Monster with question, attack, and defense. First of all, he's adorable. Isn't he cute? Aw, I love him. Even though he does kind of look like uh, they drew the monster and then just kind of like at the end, they're like, oh shit, we forgot to put a face on it. And then just like doodled something. <laughs> but he's super cute. What do? Gains 200 attack for each card in your opponent's graveyard. During your standby phase, if this card is in your hand or your graveyard and your opponent has more cards in their graveyard than you do, you can special summon this card. You can only use this effect once per turn. Okay, so the special summon ability is kind of cute. And the fact that it gets 200 attack for each card in your opponent's graveyard means against the right matchup. Something like, I don't know, Light Sworn? and your opponent's got a boatload of crap in their grave, it's gonna hit the field with some decent attack. Granted, in like a 40 card deck, uh, it can't quite hit 8k, so you can't really OTK with it. So it's not quite as good as uh, Grand Maju. So I guess that is something to consider. But it does put itself on board and it can be a big beat stick. So that's at least cute. Uh, also, it is, it is also cute. So there's also that. <laughs> Imagine playing this thing against like a guy who's doing like a grass deck. That would be the funniest counter. All right, so number seven is my favorite card on this list because it is the most ridiculous. Musical Sumo Dice Games. This rank six fire machine with 600 attack, but 3000 defense. That's a big booty. I guess they're sumo wrestlers, right? Made of two level six monsters. Okay, cool. So it, you know, it's not like Super difficult to make. It'd be nice if it was a rank four, but a rank six is an okay rank to be. It's it's not one of the worst ones. The worst ones rank tens. <laughs> gotcha. But my Earth 
machine. At the start of your opponent's battle phase, oh no. If this card is in the main monster zone, so don't don't summon it to the extra monster zone, roll a six-sided die and move this card directly that many main monster zone spaces clockwise as that die result. So if you roll a one, it chunks over one space clockwise. For you, that's probably counterclockwise. Whatever. If there's a monster in the zone that this thing moves to, it gets attached to this monster as material. Okay, so it's the most gimmicky, weirdest source of removal in the entire game. Very cool. But if, if this thing's effect would make this thing exceed six materials, exceed, ex, exceed, ah, this exceed monster exceeds six exceed material, Ah! If this thing gets more than six material on it, you win the game. That is what I'm struggling with. As far as I understand it, this thing could move to your opponent's side of the field, which is a bit dangerous, because that means that if it lands on one of their monsters, sucks it up, and it gets to like seven material, because it says you win the game, that's referring to the controller of the card, and you can make your opponent win the game with this. That's pretty dumb. However, it's a dice game, so I imagine the element of chance, uh, and who wins is the point of the card. On a good day, gamble cards are not very good because they're just simply unreliable, and in Yu-Gi-Oh, if it doesn't win you the game, it loses you the game, because that's how this game is. So in a deck building game, you know, we already have chance built into it simply because you might not draw the cards you need. The last thing you need is to also have the card that you do want also may not necessarily work due to chance. I wish we could have chance cards in this game, but they're, they're always just crappy. Not only that, but uh, assuming you do get this thing to, you know, suck up one of your opponent's monsters, you might accidentally give them the win. That's, uh, this is probably the single most gimmicky card in the game. This is ridiculous. I got to make me a deck profile. Be careful, don't cheat. If you try to cheat on the dice roll, you'll turn into a monkey. <coughs> don't worry. We're gonna have you turn back into your old self no time flat. So be careful. <laughs> Number six is Light Law Maiden. Level two light fairy monster that's not a tuner for some reason. 400 attack, 300 defense. It's actually important for this thing. Just trust me. At the start of your opponent's battle phase, you can target any number of their face up attack position monsters. While this card is in a monster zone, those targeted monsters must attack this thing if able. However, it also does have an effect that says, once per turn, when an attack is declared involving this monster and in a face up attack position monster on your opponent's side of the field, negate the attack, and if you do, inflict damage to your opponent equal to half that monster's original attack. Oh, that's a walking magic cylinder. <laughs> that's... So you're telling me that this woman likes to run out in front of everybody, beg to be attacked, and then ultimately end up being completely useless. It would be cool if it could negate a bunch of attacks. Then it would basically just be a wall, a kind of dark sanctuary. But it would be tied to a monster and not uh, tied to a coin flip. That'd be actually... Pretty neat, but instead it only blocks one and then it just gets actually pounded into the dirt. I bet you can make something gimmicky about this though. But I mean, frankly, you probably do that for every one of these cards, but I bet you could do something really silly with this, uh, given that it's, it's advantageous typing. Could be a level one though, that would have been nice. Number five. Divine Dragon Titanomachia. It's spelled wrong, so people don't think it's a Machina monster. Level 10, Light Dragon Monster. 3k attack, 2k defense. Okay, cool. Well, what do? This special summoned card can be destroyed by battle. Nice, it's got 3k attack. Why does it need battle protection? You can only use each of the following effects of Divine Dragon Titanomachia once per turn. You can banish three Divine Dragon Titanomachias from your graveyard and or face up on your field, including this card face up on the field. Destroy all cards your opponent controls. I love the way this one's worded because it's like, you gotta banish three copies of it, including this one on a field. But because this is an ignition effect, it would need to be on the field to begin with. You can only have three copies of a card. So uh, I don't know, are you banishing a fourth copy? Is that, is that what it's telling you don't do that? No, you can't banish the three copies in your grave. It's got to be one of the ones on the field, too. <laughs> During the end phase, send cards from the top of your deck to the graveyard equal to the number of dragon monsters you control. Presumably so that you can get more copies of uh, Titanomachia into your graveyard in order to use its stupid board bite effect. Okay, so it's a big dumb beater. That's uh, very evident. It can only be special summoned in order to get its uh, protection by battle. I guess that's probably the way you'd get it on board. I guess you're probably not tribute summoning this thing. But the most damning thing about this card 
card is that you just simply need the other copies already in rotation, which is not great. <laughs> if it was, uh, uh, simply just nuking your opponent's board isn't a, a big enough reward somehow in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh in order for you to try to play this clunky strategy. Plus, Vaporwave Dragon here, uh, milling in the end phase doesn't really help you set that up very well because that means at the end of your turn, you might make this thing's live, uh, which doesn't do you any good. Here we go, Reptieg is number four. Level one, Earth Reptile Monster. Zero attack. <laughs> the man who put nine defense. Could you imagine if it actually did? That would be very funny. I assume that's a typo and it's supposed to be a zero. Can I be destroyed by battle? I love how uh, battle protection, which used to be very good at the start of the game, now here at the end of the game, end, because it's current, it is now a useless line of text that might as well not even be there, because who cares? Welcome to Whose Turn Is It Anyway? The game where battle protection's bad and the life points don't matter. <laughs> I did it! But anyway, if this card was normal summoned, oh gross, it's got zero attack. <laughs> During the standby phase of the summoning player's next turn, uh, this could say win the game and it wouldn't be good, right? Because it's like, you need to normal summon a monster with zero attack power and it's got to live until your next turn. That is, it does not matter what this says next. It will not be good because that will never happen. You can tribute this card. Special summon up to three level four or lower reptile and or rock monsters from your hand or deck, but banish them during the end phase. Holy crap, that effect is amazing. Like I said, it could literally say win the game and it wouldn't matter. In this case, it's summon three monsters from your deck. That's insane. It does have a caveat that says if you special summon two or more monsters, those monsters need to have the same name. So it's like Rescue Rabbit, basically. Uh, yeah, this thing would be absolutely fantastic if you could use it during the turn you played it. But nah. If it just was Reptiles, you know what? I think it would be a playable card in, like, a Reptile deck. Balanced by the fact there is no such thing as a Reptile deck. <laughs> just like Snake Rain. But nah, by, by also lumping in rock types for some reason, it's a lizard egg. Why does it care about rock types? We need to give it some stupid nerfing effect. In this case, make it use turn three, which is bad. All right, so you might be thinking, but Dave, it's got battle protection. It will totally live. It has zero attack power. If your opponent is playing any kind of deck worth its salt, it will most likely be able to muster 8k damage on board and then swing into your monster with zero attack. In that case, you might as well not have any monsters on board because it's not doing anything to defend your life points. Matter of fact, it being a monster might actually help your opponent kill you because a lot of things are like, this can't attack directly, or if your opponent has a monster, summon me, or blah, 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 blah. Having a zero attack power monster face up in attack mode will probably, at worst, facilitate your opponent killing you anyway, as opposed to just you doing nothing. So yes, it might survive battle, but you will not. But if it does live, the combos. <laughs> Doki Doki, move over, baby. Maybe. Award for best theming and card design goes to Amphibia's Bugroth Mark 11. I think it's 11, right? It's not Mark 2, it's Mark 11. Level 5 Water Machine Monster, 1850 attack, 1500 defense. What do? While Umi is not on the field, ooh, this card gains 700 attack, but cannot attack directly. While Umi is on the field, you can target one face-up non-water monster, destroy it. You can only use this effect once per turn. Cool. I wasn't kidding when I said best theming card design because it's an amphibious bug broth, right? When it's not in the water, it does something. When it is in the water, it does something else. It's an amphibian, you know, because it likes both. But uh, obviously the problem with that is uh, when you design something to be neat in Yu-Gi-Oh, it also means it's probably bad. And making a water monster that has anti-synergy with Umi is stupid. Especially considering the fact that it's level five, so you're probably playing this with a legendary ocean, so you can even summon it to begin with. <laughs> but it's a level five machine! <laughs> I overlay with Cyber Dragon, even though I probably would have had to tribute the Cyber Dragon to be, whatever, Infinity. I do, I do like the, the, the removal. I think it's, it's kind of fun. And the theming with, with the Legendary Ocean stuff is kind of neat. It's, oh, it's, it's not great. Number two, Reverse Jar. 
I love this game that Konami plays where they're like, how good can we make a flip monster before it is actually considered a broken card? Uh, the answer is as good as they would like, uh, because being a flip monster makes you terrible. See Pot of the Forbidden. Level 3 Earth Rock Monster, with stats we don't care about because they're under a thousand each. Flip! Ew! Ow! Change as many other face-up attack position monsters on the field as possible to face-down defense position. Then return as many face-up spells and traps on the field to their owner's hands. Then... Each player can set spells and traps up to the number of spells and traps returned to their hand by this effect. Besides that last part being kind of wonky, because like, who cares? If, if you're setting your face up continuous spell cards, like who cares? Now they're just vulnerable and they don't do nothing. I guess putting your traps back down, like your face up continuous traps, putting them back down, I get some setup for next turn, I guess. But Book of Mooning all the face up attack position monsters on the field that you want? That's super powerful. And it's like as many as possible. So it's even got like a uh, wording to get around like link monsters and stuff. So it's not like I don't get to bounce the spells if I don't hit a monster because all they had was links. No, it's as many as possible. If that's zero, it's zero. Then you bounce the spells. So it's even got a uh, future proofed writing in its problem solving card text and it's still not good. Even from the beginning of the game, like setting a monster and passing has never been a particularly good opening move. Uh, it puts no uh, pressure on your opponent to act. Putting a big beat stick on board at least makes your opponent be like, okay, I gotta do something, otherwise that's gonna smack me in the face next turn. Setting a monster face down, it, nothing's immediately in a threat. So it, it's, it's, it's never been a particularly bold opening move. So even in their hey heyday set manator bug, it still wasn't great. But in this thing books your opponent's entire field and it's still not great. Dishonorable mention! Psychic Rover. Level two, dark psychic monster. Zero attack, 700 defense. If this card is special summoned, it doesn't do it by itself. Roll a six sided die. Oh no. If you roll a one or a six, destroy up to two cards on the field. Ooh, that doesn't target. If this card is sent to the graveyard, roll a six sided die. If you roll a two, three, four, or five, special summon this card, ah. Neither of those are once per turn. Neither of those are once per turn. Meaning, uh, you could use its effect, you know, like during the battle phase, like your opponent can run it over or you could like link it away or something. Cause it says, if this is sent to the graveyard, it doesn't say like, you know, buy whatever, you can almirage it away or whatever the hell you want to do. You can use its effect to special summon itself, which the odds are pretty good. And then you can use its effect that when it gets summoned to blow up one of your opponent's cards and blow up itself, triggering the second effect again. And if you get super lucky or you have like that six on board, I guess, does that mean you could like just, you could clear your opponent's board with this if you're just like Duke Devlin and like the master of dice? Keep your eyes on me ladies, cheap parlor tricks are extremely erotic, oh yeah. This card's broke, actually it's terrible. If it went off like that though, that'd be, that would be absolutely insane. It does say that the, the, the player that summoned this card cannot special summon from their extra deck for the rest of the turn, so you can't like use it as cheesy link material, but if this is what you're playing, I, I don't think link combo is your end game here. I think it's rover, red rover, uh, I want to bowl your monsters over, I think is what you're, you're going for here. That's terrible, but would be super funny. Number one, end of the line, end of the list. Normal trap card. I like traps. Um, phrasing? Traps are fun. I play frogs in like Kragan and I'm probably gonna play Labyrinth on, on my stream. So like, I'm, I'm not, a, I'm a man who's not afraid of a good trap. <laughs> phrasing. When I see normal trap, I'm like, oh man, that's searchable, what do? If your life points are lower than 100, oh, oh no, draw two cards, okay? If your life points are lower than 10, draw two additional cards. Oh, wow. Getting your life points down to 100 really isn't too bad. If you're playing like Dino Morphia or the Wing Dragon of Ra, you could probably get your, your life points down there. Um, and if you're playing Wing Dragon of Ra, you're already playing a gimmick deck, so this is gonna slide right in there. <laughs> Phrasing first, boo! So getting that slow pot of greed, probably doable. Getting the, the four cards? Yo, like, how do you get your life points lower than 10? It's not 10, it's lower than 10. Matter of fact, it's lower than 100 now that I read it again. So you can't even do the Wing Dragon Ra and then flip this. You gotta do Wing Dragon Ra and then Solemn Judgment. You just gotta, regardless, you just gotta Solemn Judgment yourself when you got no life points. That's the only way you can do this. That is, that's never gonna go off. I have an urge to play this card. I don't know what it is. Like, I can feel it. I can feel the broke combos. The draw two and then nothing else. <laughs> 
I want to draw four. But anyway, guys, that was a list. Those are some of the worst cards this year. I think it was an interesting batch. We didn't get any spectacularly awful cards, but we certainly got a lot that are just so incredibly gimmicky. Like, wow. Makes me excited for the best of list. I'm sure it's going to be a lot of extra deck boss monsters. I can't wait.